Welcome back guys to another K-Swap 308 episode. Today we are going to turn the clock back a little bit. If you've been watching since the beginning of the series or you've at least tuned into some of the early episodes, you know what kind of car we started this project with. And ever since, a lot of you guys have been asking why Cannibalize such a nice example? Because this car was pretty nice when we started. There's two simple answers for that though. The first one being, it's easier to start with a complete car. You don't have to find all the little knickknacks. There's less problems. You don't have to deal with issues and rust and surprises. So if you're gonna dive into a build of your own, I suggest buying the best car that you can to start with. It's financially the smartest way to go, at least in my experience. But the second answer is because if we buy a nicer car, we wind up with a lot of parts that we can sell. And we proved that theory to be worthwhile when we sold the engine out of this car and made up all of the difference and then some between the cheapest 308 I could find for sale and the one that I bought. And we've still got a stockpile of parts that came off of this thing that we need to clean up and get sold so we can help fund this project. So today we're going to dive into it, get some cleanup done and put some money in our pocket. Let's do it. I figured we'd start this episode out by going through and creating a catalog of all the parts that I wanna get rid of. There's a lot of stuff here that needs a new home. Some of it I'm sure you guys are gonna have questions about. Why would I get rid of it, for example? But I wanna go through, show you guys what we're working with, and then we'll take the next steps from there. The first items on our list are interior components. And obviously, as most of you guys know, we've pulled all of this stuff out of the car and we're not using any of it, which is honestly pretty counter to what I thought I'd be doing when I first bought this car. I mean, the interior in this thing is gorgeous. It's got some of the most unique looking seats of any car out there. And the tan leather in this thing really does look good, even though I'm not normally a fan of tan leather. We're getting rid of it though, because it just doesn't fit with the theme of the build. I mean, we're building a time attack car here and time attack cars don't have fully furnished, luxurious leather interiors. This is a lot of weight we can save and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some money to put in our pockets. And then there's the owner's manuals, the booklets, the literature that comes with a car. And while this stuff really does seem like it has some intrinsic value, especially considering just how cool some of the artwork and how in-depth these booklets go, they're just not really relevant anymore. And I'm pretty sure there's someone out there with a 308 that would really like to have these, at least more than I would. It'd be cool to keep them with the car, but anybody buying this car from me in the future isn't gonna care about this stuff. On the same note is the factory tool kit and factory jack kit. This stuff is complete and in really good shape and some Ferrari enthusiasts out there would be really happy to have this for their car. On my end, I don't need it. It's also extra weight and I don't have a place to put it anymore. I might as well send this stuff on to a new home. I've got a complete carpet pulled out of the car that I can sell, which is in really good shape, but the floor mats that sat on top of it not so much, but I think we can clean this stuff up, give it a new lease on life, and get some money out of these components too. Last on today's list is a slew of engine components. We might have sold the motor itself, but I got a lot of accessories that I know somebody out there is gonna need to put their car back together. So we'll get these things pulled out, figure out what we've got, and get them shined up a little bit. Pull that old grease and grime off of them. So that's some of the stuff that I wanna get rid of, but in getting rid of it, we need to clean it up. No one wants to buy dirty, old, crappy parts. And to get the most money that we can out of this stuff, we need to put in some elbow grease. So that brings us to today's video sponsor, which is Turtle Wax. Now I'll pump the brakes a little bit. I know some of you guys are gonna say, whoa, sponsored content, what's going on here? But none of the content that I make would be even remotely possible without sponsors. And Turtle Wax has been a supporter of Stanceworks and myself for years. And when I told them about the 308 project, they were eager to be involved and said, tell us what we can do. So I'm excited to use this stockpile of cleaners and detailers today so that we can get as much as we can out of these parts. Let's see how we can transform them. The first thing we're gonna work on cleaning up are the front seats. Both of them have been sitting in the shop collecting quite a bit of dust since the beginning of the year when I pulled them out. The passenger seat's in pretty much perfect shape, but the driver's seat is a little bit worse for wear. It's got some stains here and there from who knows what, but with a little bit of elbow grease, we should be able to clean it up pretty nicely. To clean the seats off, I'm using Turtle Wax's Hybrid Solutions Mist Interior Detailer, and it's just a matter of spraying it on and scrubbing it off. My main concern is just getting the dark grease spots off of the seat. I don't know where they came from, but it appears to be some sort of dark axle grease or something similar. 
But as you guys can see, it came off perfectly and these seats cleaned up are really looking good. The story's no different for the door cards and I gave them the exact same treatment. The center console was victim to similar staining as the seat, some dark grease that seems to have embedded itself in the leather, but with a bit of elbow grease, it too cleaned up and was looking really good for its age, nearly 40 years old at this point. One job left for our interior detailer. I figure maybe we should spray this thing down, get the pages looking nice and shiny. Maybe not. Maybe this stuff's good as it is. Turning our attention back over to the floor mats, I don't know if you guys can tell, but these things are quite discolored in the middle. They're gray when they should be tan, and I have no idea what's gotten on them, but I think they should clean up. This time around, I'm using Turtle Wax's Power Out Carpets and Mats Heavy Duty Cleaner. And although it should go without saying that even though this is a sponsored video and all of the views in this video are my own, I can say this stuff works incredibly well. I've been using it on all of my vehicle carpets for years. It's gonna lift this stuff right out of these mats. The finished result of these things looks fantastic. They look dang near new again. I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. It even pulled that heavy grease stain that was on the corner out and there is no sign of it left. Now, as most of you guys know, the engine from the 308 is long gone. It wound up in an auction on Bring a Trailer and it has since been shipped to Germany. But I wanted to revisit some of the old footage because I spent a lot of time cleaning this thing bottom to top every nook and cranny and it turned out pretty good. It's worth taking a look at. Now, I mentioned at the time, but what I use to clean this thing is Turtle Wax Bug and Tar Remover. And I will say, if you've watched this channel enough, you've seen me use this stuff a million times. I use it on everything. It is a fantastic cleaner for everything I've tried to pit it against. In this case, we're using it to clean up that box of engine components. And there's a lot of them. We've got an alternator, we've got an AC pump, a smog pump, we've got a fuel distributor. And all of these components came off of the engine in a very dirty state. And so it's 40 years of grime and leaking oil, leaking fluids, you name it, it's all built up. And we've used the bug and tar remover to take care of the job. One upshot here is this stuff doesn't oxidize aluminum in my experience, so it's safe to use on parts like this stuff without making it cloudy or corroded. That of course is in contrast to a lot of really strong degreasers that are gonna leave stains all over your part. Now I've got a few of the parts sitting on the workbench all cleaned up, and I'm happy to say these things look fantastic. None of them were hot tank. This is all just a rag and some bug and tar remover, and it's got these things looking great. They're not perfect, but they're definitely good enough for someone to buy. The last thing on the list that we tackled today was I gave all of the parts and pieces in the toolkits a good scrub down and wiped down the leather for good measure. So we've got everything cleaned up, which means it's time to get everything listed on the internet, get it sold. That's always my downfall, spending the time to do that side of this stuff. But the good news is we've already sold the engine and transmission, which if you guys remember a number of months ago, it brought in 11,750 bucks, which was way more than I expected to get for it. And I don't think I would have gotten that much if we hadn't spent the time to actually clean it within an inch of its life. I mean, the record showed that it was a nice motor, but the way that it looked in that ad, I know helped increase its value. And the same thing happened with the interior. I don't think if we clean it up, we're gonna get as much for it. And I'm happy to say before even posting this video, it's already sold. I sold the seats, the door cards, and the center console for another $4,000. And the last part off the card that I've sold is the front bumper for a thousand bucks, bringing in a grand total of $16,750 in parts sales from this car which puts us well ahead of the cheapest 308 you're ever gonna find. I'm quite happy with the return on this investment and the time spent cleaning this stuff up. I definitely think it's worthwhile. So now that we've got some money in the pocket, it's time to dive back into some fabrication, make some more progress on this thing. We gotta keep the pedal down. So in the next episode, we will get back to it. Thank you as always for watching. I'll catch you then.